y'all for joining me on this special edition, friendship edition of the Carnivore Connection. Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I forgot yes. one thing. Lynn, what does friendship, even if it's virtual, even if you've only done it one time, what does friendship mean to you at this point in your life, girl? You know, that's a really good question because I used to put a lot of importance on what it would look like to people from the outside if I had a lot of friends. As I've aged, I have found that I don't need a lot of friends. And friendship for me is someone who I'm looking for people who are just genuine. What you see is what you get. No pretenses, no masks. And I can just be myself. Me, friendship is like, it's so many things that are comfortable. You know, to me, like comfortable, like it's like a comfortable shoe. It's like a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, you know, just a warm bath. Anyway, just it's just some it just brings comfort to me to know that I have, you know, friends that I can trust, a community that I can, you know, call up someone if you just want to talk and be vulnerable and not be judged. To me, and to your point, Lynn, that's not a lot of people. You know, right. I I don't mind a small circle at this age. You know, um, and, and Rose, you and I talked about this before with social media. I came off for a while. I'm not as active, but it's funny because um, someone had said to me, well, how are we supposed to get in? How are we supposed to know what's going on with you? Well, there's the phone, <laughs> there's text, and that even makes my circle smaller. Friendship to me is like caring about the well-being of somebody, right? caring about what they're going through and is there anything i can do to help right and you only get that like lynn said you only get that from genuine people who are ready to share hey this is what's going on with me and then you feel like you can share what's going on with you and then lakeith this is something to me that helps me <laughs> and and i happen to say something to her in the conversation that she may take and that to me is like a bond happens there instantly you know you don't have to know someone for a hundred years you can talk to them once and just know hey this person cares about what i just shared because they offered it they offered me help they offered me a thought and um i just love that i didn't have that ability until i got older that I come into contact with, I automatically think of them as my friend. As a matter of fact, on my social media posts or when I engage with people, it's always my friend, my friend. At work with the students that I work with and my colleagues, it's my friend, my friend, because I believe that everybody that I'm in contact with, whether it's positive, negative, or mad, is my friend. They're placed on my path for a reason. I have tons of friends. I I am a friend everywhere I go in return as well. But my power circle, those that are close to me, that are connected to me, that can call me or I can call them, those are few, very few, right? Those are my ride or dies. Those are my power circles. But I believe that I'm a sister friend to everybody that I come into contact with because it's needed. In this day and time, it's needed. I need it, and I'm sure somebody in the universe needs it as well. Hey, friends. Hey, friends. Hey, friends. This is Coach Rose AJ coming to holla at y'all. Y'all, I got some friends with me today, some friends with me today. This is the Carnivore Connection where we're talking about things that are heartfelt and soulful, right? We're going to get to the gist of what's going on in our lives tonight. And um, if we've tried any new tips or tricks, all that good stuff, and maybe some new products or some experiments that we're doing on ourselves and whatnot. So let me just introduce you to the people that are here with me, my ride or dies. I met these ladies in person at a meetup that Lynn and I hosted on May the 4th at um, Green Lake Park. And Lakeitha and I were in a life coach life coach and health coach training certification cohort. And she came up with one of her pals, her besties up there. And then Kim, actually, I met Kim and Lynn virtually first, and we're all four in Western Washington. So at this meetup, right. there was what about six of us that included Lynn's husband, um, Lakeitha's friend. Now, you guys, you don't have to be a full fledged carnivore to be in these conversations, because it's really about life.
what's happening. You know, women that are over 50 years old or, hey, women that are just under 50 years old are invited to join in the conversation. But enough about me right now. You guys probably know more about me than you need to know. <laughs> And what we're going to do tonight is essentially just catch up. So Lynn has had some experiences in Texas that I want her to share about. Kim wants to talk about a scale that Lynn recommended. And I really, really would like us, especially Coach L. Kelly, to join in the conversation about the friendships and the connections that she made at this MEATUP. And we didn't necessarily just talk about me, you guys. We talked about a plethora of so many things. So Lynn, um, can you introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Rose. So my name is Lynn and I have a channel called Midlife Carnivore. I have been on the carnivore diet for a little over a year. I am 56 years old and live in Washington state. And I went on the carnivore diet because I was disabled with mast cell activation syndrome, also very morbidly obese, pushing 350 pounds, becoming crippled very quickly, and I was desperate. And so I went on the carnivore diet just to see if it would help. And a year later, my life has is completely different. It's Lakita, thank you for having me. As Coach Rose AJ said, we met in our um, health and wellness cohort. Um, I started on that journey about eight, nine months ago. Uh, I've lost 30 pounds since then, you know, so I started under the guise that I was going to be a coach as, you know, well for others, but also I ended up learning a lot in the journey, um, you know, on the journey myself. I'm not carnivore, but I appreciate these ladies for inviting me in the group and the community that we have that transcends any sort of, you know, whatever protocol we follow. You know, I follow on pescatarian, I follow something different, but the community that we've built transcends any of that. So <laughs> thank you for having me here tonight. Okay, now you're on, Kim. <laughs> Thanks, Lakeitha. Um, I'm Kim Shine. I don't have a channel. I'm not a coach, but I, um, have learned so much from Rose and Lynn and all the other folks on YouTube that I've been following. I've been carnivore for four months, but I've been keto for five years almost. Uh, lost the majority of my weight with keto, but was having just metabolic issues. I could not, you, you know, even though I lost the weight and, you know, many things improved, I could not get past the fatigue and just feeling yucky. And miracle of YouTube, I found, you know, a keto doctor that said, hey, if keto isn't enough, you might try carnivore. And boy, uh, like Lynn, I, you know, I had sort of instant results and I'm all in. It's uh, four months now, but I don't, I don't, I, it gets better and better, you know, just the energy and the clarity and the happiness. So happy to be here. I loved meeting you guys. We had just a wonderful walk and I hope to do it again. The most impactful or empowering part of meeting up, doing the 5K and then the coffee social immediately thereafter. Yeah, I can share. So, I mean, obviously meeting all of you in person was, was wonderful. And I think for me, the time I spent talking with Lakitha's friend Renee, was really meaningful because it seemed as though she related to a lot of the journey that I've been on and um, has been frustrated with the oddities in her health, just like I was, and not getting answers from doctors. And so it was really nice to have a chance to talk with her and maybe give her some things that she could try. And we talked about histamine sensitivities. We talked about my mast cell activation syndrome, which is actually very much more common than, than doctors even realize. And um, I think that hopefully it gave her some hope, it at least gave her something that she could start with. And because it's very frustrating when you go from doctor to doctor and nobody has an answer for you. And I understand that. I dealt with that for 35 years before I got my diagnosis. And so that was really meaningful for me. Um. So what was the question? You know how we, you know, our memory, you know. So in <laughs> essentially, what was the most impactful part of oh. meeting people in person that you just met virtually or yeah. just knew virtually? There are there are, are a few things in life that just feed the soul, that just feeds our spirit. And I think that the cool thing was just having that sense of community. Like a lot of us had not met each other before. 
Um, Rose, you, you, you know, putting this together, you made us branch out. So actually Lynn got to hang out with my good friend, Renee. I got to hang out with Kim and it was amazing. So that just that sense of community, we all come, you know, we all have our own stories. I think as women, when we can let our hair down and be vulnerable and share on a real level, like this was like, this was like a walking therapy, if you will. This wasn't just like a walk and, you know, little talk here and there. This was like major, let's deep dive, let's be vulnerable with each other. We all have our own stories. We all have our own struggles, but ways that we've overcome those struggles and we all have our own path. So like I said, I'm not carnivore, but it was so interesting to like talk to Kim when we, you know, partnered up and just to hear about her journey and how she got on the path. And, you know, one of the things that I had shared at the time was even though I've lost 30 pounds, I still have 10 more to go. But, um, and that's just because when I got to the 30, I'm like, wow, if I can do, well, I can just do another 10, you know, like I just didn't even think this was possible. But um, one of the things that I liked is that in just sharing my experience, talking to Kim about things that I've gone through, you know, me being 30, 40 pounds overweight, just, you know, dates back to just, you know, just bad eating, you know, just dealing with food addiction. You know, when I, I, I just say addiction because anything you have to eat too much of or do too much of, I feel like it's an addiction. I think that's the correct word. And just dealing with that and just talking to her, even though I'm not carnivore, one of the things that she was talking about is, you know, maybe eating lower carb. I said, that's, I'm going to do it. And because one of the things that we talked about is I had just went to the doctor and I'm feeling really good about this 30, these 30 pounds that I've lost. I know I have to be the epitome of health. And then I find out, oh, well, you're near pre-diabetic numbers. And I didn't know that at the time because when you lose weight, you know, you're automatically healthier, right? So <laughs> uh, pre-diabetic, you have the wrong person. But then it did make me think I hadn't had uh, my blood tested in a couple of years. It did make me feel like maybe it is actually better than what it probably was, you know, during the time that I hadn't gotten tested. Mm -hmm. So just having that talk, Kim, I did that, just went really low carb implemented some things. I am no longer in that pre-diabetic range. You know, I'm out of there. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's the kind of, you know, just meeting up like that, being vulnerable with each other, sharing at that level, because this is really, this is very personal to us. And and to share like that and to have people really hear you and, and for us to communicate like that, to me, that's what I mean. Just, it was like feeding the soul. You know, I, I think it was amazing. Well, thank you for that. And if I can just draw upon what you pointed out, Coach L. Kelly, that you partnered up with different people. So a lot of times I'm a connector. So naturally, I like to create chaos. I like to create friction, right? Because that's where the growth really happens. When people are uncomfortable, when they're vulnerable, you might never see these people again. So you might as well unload like you're at a grocery store at Walmart. You're never going to see them again, but then you see them the next time and the next time or whatever. So I really appreciate everybody being willing to switch up with partners because I could see you, um, Lakeitha, going with your friend. I could see me and Kim and um, Lynn teaming up just because we built some kind of a relationship already, but me and you naturally coach L Kelly, because we are African American women and we have been through six months of studying and conversating and, you know, coaching each other. So that would be a natural draw. So, right. yeah. So thank you for being willing to do that. And also pointing out what you've learned from each other. What about you, Kim? Yeah, I was for you. I had the same experience of soul connection you know just feeding the soul uh, being with people who care that much about their own health and are willing to take it into their own hands and do something about it is so empowering you know like it's so hard to do it when you're alone you know we all we all reach that breaking point where we're like i have to do something and we started something you know but when you can come together as a as a community and support each other in that quest, right? You know, because I don't have anybody else in my life. You know, I go off to the gym by myself. I prep my food by myself. I, you know, uh, which is fine. You know, my husband doesn't need this. He's never been morbidly obese like I was. But, um you know, it's so wonderful. It just fills my heart with joy to know that there's other women out there that have had difficult times and they've said, no, 
there is a solution. I'm going to find that solution no matter what. That's the spirit that I think was there that day with all of us that, you know, one step at a time, metaphorically, mm-hmm. as we walked around the lake, we just appreciated the fact that we're all, we're in this together, you know, this health movement, whatever it may be, you know, um, just because carnivore works for me doesn't mean it's for everybody. Um, you know, I wish I could have a vegetable, but. <laughs> Dietary protocol. Uh, I, I think a lot of vegans and vegetarians, they wear their dietary protocol like a badge of honor. They they swear by it. And to be candid with you, and I think Coach Al Kelly, when we were going through this cohort, I was voicing to you that I wanted to be of service to people that were still in the standard American diet as well as low carb, ketogenic, and um, the, uh, the carnivore space. But I finally drew my line in the sand and just declared, well, I'm a carnivore. I've been a carnivore since 2020, and I know what it entails, right? It's the ultimate elimination protocol. Really, it is. But for someone who's still struggling, but they don't want to get off of that struggle, I'm not that person for them. I'm not, I honestly know that I'm not that person for them, right? So when I made that line in the sand that freed up a lot of mental space, emotional space, and all that good stuff. So I wear the fact that I'm a carnivore very proudly as I would wear a cross, right? On my chest, it's my superpower along with a lot of other things. I cannot be of service to everyone even though I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, how, did it, how did it feel for you, Coach Rose, getting everyone together like that, seeing that kind of transform, you know, because you and Lynn brought it to life? Well, you know, to be quite honest, okay, so I love connecting people. It's what I do naturally. And before COVID, I used to run my own running events, right? So in that arena, I was very natural bringing people together for coffee, bringing people together for races and all that good stuff. So doing it on this kind of a platform around a dietary protocol, it was next level, right? Just imagining what the future could actually be if powerhouses like the four of us came together and then more powerhouses came together, regardless of the dietary protocol. But we had the conversations about our dietary protocol, right? Right. And had those heartfelt conversations. It was next level for me. Yeah, it was awesome. I love it. That means we have to do it again. Yes. Yes. We do. Yes. We do. A future date should be in store, hopefully in the fall before the weather turns. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, you, you know, it's a good meetup when nobody wanted to leave. We sat <laughs> right. at that Starbucks. We took over that Starbucks and nobody right. wanted to leave. But we had right. to because I had yeah. to eat dinner around three o'clock, my old <laughs> bad meal. I was like, look. And then I think Lakeitha, you and Renee was looking at some dog restaurant or something. And I was like, Kim, I know you got to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was like, so and Lynn had her meat sticks. No, I don't want your chomps. No, <laughs> I want a whole plate of food. That ain't going to do nothing but make me angry. But thank you, Lynn. And you do oh, old mad. We will see a lot yeah. more later. Yeah. And you're doing old mad, so it's like it's yeah. time, right? Like, right, time right. Me. My body's like, girl. <laughs> So, so let's um, catch up on some things. Um, what's new? Um, Lynn, I know you mentioned something about Texas. Well, I want you to talk about Texas. Oh, yeah. Um, you've done some traveling as well. And you mentioned something about a scale that Lynn shared with you that you wanted to share. And then I have a couple of things. But um, can we start with you, Coach L. Kelly? What's been going on with you in the last month that you would like to share with us? It doesn't have to be dietary related it could just be about life in general well you know one of the things that i noticed um so you know just going through this health journey right you know how i had COVID in 2020 and my husband came home and then we got COVID this time so a couple years later we got COVID again and one of the things that i noticed i never experienced this before one of the things that i noticed is that even though i was sick with COVID, i didn't have to take any medicine I didn't have a runny nose. I was just tired, you know, like it just really beats you down from an energy perspective. And I was thinking, you know what? There are certain signs that you look for outside of the scale wins to say, I just know I'm going down the right path. I just know I'm healthier. And that's the kind of feeling that I've had over these uh, miserable, no energy (laughs) 
uh, eight days or 10 days or so. So just dealing with COVID, but then just feeling good because just making all these health changes to see that, to get out of the pre-diabetic, that was like, really, let me tell you something. When that doctor said the pre and the diabetic in the same sentence with my name, that just, and then, you know, me and Kim had that call or not the call, had that conversation during our, our walk. That has been my sole focus too. just everything. I feel a crazy person in terms of just really laser focus because diabetes is no joke. It's not a fun thing to deal with. I had an ex-husband that was a diabetic and we saw um, amputations, different things happen there. So when you say that to me, that's like, like crazy person, like any issues that I thought I had with food, any addictions, anything like that, that we're still trying to linger around, um, that got my attention. So sometimes we can take the bad things and turn it into a good. So that has been my sole focus, guys, over this last month or so, like getting myself together. And so I just feel like it wasn't that bad dealing with COVID and just getting ready to travel and, and do some things with the hubby, getting ready to go to Hawaii. So that is not why the extra 10 pounds though. What it is, is that we're gonna be transparent, okay? We're, we're amongst friends. So when I started on this health journey, I was 199.6, right? And I'm a, I'm 5'6", I'm, I'm big. So at 199.6, you know, people are really nice to say, you don't look like 199.6. But then I've gotten down to 170, but I hadn't been down to the 170 range since 2014, right? You know how you have pivotal moments in your life, like I remember at that wedding, you know, I've been I'm the third and final husband now, but I remember at that wedding, I was this size, that size. But now I'm saying like, no, I'm going to 160. I'm going for the gusto, which I haven't been there since 2010, I think, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here, why not? Why not take my health to the next level? I know that I'd be more comfortable there. So that's been my uh, focus too, but not just because of Hawaii. Like this is really when you're told that you're gonna, that you are possibly bordering, you know, some kind of um, disease like that, kind of like your focus change. It's nice to look cute and I want to be cute. So let's get that right. I want cute pictures, but I want to be healthy. So that has kind of like been my focus and everything that I'm, you know, just been targeting over the last few months girl and you will get there and i am so proud of you for paying attention to the numbers although the aesthetics are top of the line it's top notch to look and feel good but it it kind of takes a back seat to our health and our numbers you go absolutely thank you guys so yeah i had you have a lot of ground to cover um because a lot has happened so um i went down to texas for the hack your health conference um, which is in Austin, Texas. And I went primarily with the Healing Humanity team, you know, the Healing Humanity documentary that is being made on the proper human diet, which includes, you know, ketogenic diet, carnivore diet, um, you know, low carb diets. And um, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. It was a whirlwind of a trip. We're there for 10 days. And we're doing a lot of filming for the documentary in addition to going to the conference. And I, I, the cool thing was all the people I met. And so if you're in the carnivore community, you'll probably know the, who these people are, <laughs> but it was, we, we stayed kind of outside of Austin in this little cool little cute town. And the property we stayed at was, um, had two basically living quarters. One was a main house. One was this big refurbished barn that was really just another living quarter. And it had it upstairs with a big old loft and sleeping quarters. It had a full kitchen. It had a big screen with a viewing area. You know, it had tables all over the place. It was just ideal for a social setting. And we had um, two people that made the most amazing food. We had Ashley Rogers, who's from Carnivore Brothers, and Brett, who is from Hoosier Carnivore, came primarily just to cook for everybody. And the food was incredible. And word got out that the food was incredible. So we had Dr. Chafee and his girlfriend, Elle, dropping in to eat with Bella, 
from Steak and Butter Gal and her fiance Max, they were like stopping in frequently because they wanted the best food in town. So I had a great opportunity to sit down and get to know them. Had a great like cross the table conversation with Dr. Chafee, just like it was really cool. Um, got to meet all the coaches from Steak and Butter Gang. I already knew Emily because she's in our healing humanity, but I got to meet Coach Raymond and I got to meet Rochelle and Amy, all their coaches. Um, got to meet Dr. Kiltz, who's the best hugger in the world. He's amazing. Got to meet Dr. Ovadia, the you know, who's the famous card cardiothoracic carnivore <laughs> surgeon. Uh, got to spend quite a bit of time with Dr. Baker as well. Yeah, and it's cool because he lives in my town. He lives like like down the road from me practically, and I had to go to Texas to meet him. But it was kind of cool because he, um, I guess his people booked him as leaving his Airbnb a day before his flight home. So he came and crashed at our place. And so we just got to hang out and everything and, and had, you know, great, great just conversation. And I was a little bit like surprised because towards the end of the evening that night he spent, he just told me and my husband, hey, why don't I get your contact information so we can connect back home and have some, you know, get go have some steak or something. So that was really cool. Okay. And of course, Todd and Lindy were there. You know, Todd Bachness and Lindy and, you know, because they've all lost, they were like 700 plus pounds and they are going to be in our documentary. Um, Robin Carnivorous Grandma, got to meet her. I got to meet Christy from Meeting Wellness. I got to meet a whole bunch of people. I'm sure I'm going to miss people. I got to meet uh, G and Frederick. I don't know if you know them from Hanging with the Browns. Okay, so there's very few people that look like me and Lakitha in this space. So I know who they yes, are. Yes, you know Robin and G and Frederick. Yes. yes. And I'm and they they are very well aware that there is a big need among the African American community for health education and yeah, they're doing good things. So um it was great to meet them and and G is just like a bundle of energy. She's, you know, if you've watched her anytime, you know that she's so outgoing and Frederick is just like, step back and like, let her do her thing, you know? But um, I'm probably leaving out people, but the, it was really cool to just kind of sit there and be able to chat and socialize and get to know people off camera. And um, I, yeah, that was really great. And of course the, the big thing for me was going down, going down to Texas was another big test of my mass cell activation syndrome because of my heat intolerance. I did, the first test was walking around Green Lake with you and I did okay. And then the next test, because then that was Washington warm. <laughs> what, 70 degrees maybe? Maybe a little more than that. This is Texas warm with humidity. And I actually did pretty well. I, yeah, I mean, I wasn't out in it forever for long, long periods of time, but I was out in it long enough to where I was really impressed that I actually did did well. I didn't have any mass cell reactions. And um, and the guys were great because they actually made me separate food because I can't have the smoked. They were and uh, actually brought his huge Traeger smoker and I couldn't have that. And so he made me, had a grill and he made me separate just grilled steaks, but it was steak and steak and steak and steak and ribs and Prime, you know, prime rib and brisket and I mean, ugh, unbelievable. Uh, I'm going to be interviewed by Dr. Chafee. Oh, how cool. Yeah. You're going to you. be on his podcast? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, July 18th. I love him. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with him and Dr. Baker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coach, Coach L. Kelly, I know you're not in this space. But I just need to send you a video or two of these gentlemen. And you'd be like, oh, uh-huh. Yes, please. Yeah, share the knowledge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And, Dr. and both yeah. of them are large, very yeah. large, tall, and not like muscular, muscular. very like mammoth men. And um, it was it was cute because I forced Adam and Carrie to take a picture of them picking up Dr. Baker. They weren't going to do it. And I made him do it. And now Carrie's all excited, like, this is my best picture ever from the trip. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I felt like so I was standing there. When I took a picture with Dr. Chafee, I felt like I was standing next to my son. Because like, mm -hmm. my son's like 6'4 and a bodybuilder. And, yeah, they're 
interesting and funny story though the first night that dr chafee and, I, and Elle is gorgeous his girlfriend she's like unbelievably beautiful and she's so sweet too but the first night that he came i found out something about dr chafee is that he's always taking off his belt and leaving at places <laughs> <laughs> And he's always wanting eye drops before he you know, goes on camera. So he kept borrowing our eye drops and he left his belt at the place. Um, and so the next day was the conference. So I, we get this message from Bella saying, Dr. Chafee thinks he left his belt in the barn. And so we did find it. Lindy actually said, yeah, I think I saw a belt in the bathroom. So here I am walking up to the conference on the first day with Dr. Chafee's belt. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Lynn. Oh, I won't say that I'm jealous, but, you know, just a tad. I'll say it. I'm totally <laughs> jealous. <laughs> what about you, Kim? What's been new with you, boo? Um, yeah, you mentioned I did do a trip, and um, I think I was telling Lakeitha about this on our walk, um, but maybe, maybe Lynn, I know Rose knows about it, but... Um, so my story is uh, complicated by like, you know, my poor diet spiraling into perimenopause and the loss of my mom. So I had basically a complete nervous breakdown in 2018. So I have been building my, that's how I found keto is, is one of the things that I found was that if, if you are having those type of challenges keto is a very restorative diet so that's really what got me onto keto but anyway um traveling is extremely difficult for me because um i don't have mast cell activation syndrome but i have just hyper hypersensitivity to like a million things mostly seed oil but like um and what how it manifests now is insomnia and so i measure my progress on the carnivore diet against insomnia incidents when I travel. So last year I did the same trip back east and I had a terrible time. I mean, like one night I didn't sleep but one hour. I had just terrible insomnia. And so this trip I did have some insomnia because no matter how careful you are and you ask them to, you know, fry your burger and butter or whatever, stuff got in my food. But here's, here's, the miracle in the in the healing in just these four months of being super clean is that I was able to get to sleep, you know, like I got three or four hours, even on the nights where I had some sort of reaction. And the next day I felt 100%, not tired, not, you know, so I could have disrupted sleep, but still function and, and, you know, be calm, cool and collected, not exhausted and irritable and all of that stuff. So I count it as a win. Now the real win will be the day that I just don't have insomnia. <laughs> but if, if you have to have insomnia because of the food at restaurants, um, to have, you know, to feel good the next day and have it not impact your mood or your ability to, you know, walk all over New York. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a huge win for me. So I wish it had. I wish I hadn't had the insomnia, but um, I, you know, I'm I'm so thrilled that I I didn't suffer from from it more. The um, but I, you know, it's hard to feel that vulnerable. You know, when I'm at home and I'm controlling my food, um, you know, the quality and the way it's prepared, I feel like a billion dollars, right? And and to just you know keep that same clean eating, but be at the mercy of whoever's prepared it for you. You know, that, that is scary. It's scary. I, I used to travel a lot for work. One of the things I had to do was quit my job because I wasn't in, I wasn't progressing past a certain point where I felt like I could do my job. Um, even on keto, I had tremendous progress, but like I said, the fatigue wasn't resolved until carnivore. So um, you know, I used to travel a lot for work, you know, so it, d it does tell me I still couldn't, I still couldn't do my job because if it required travel, I would have all this insomnia. <laughs> so I'm happy to, long-winded way of saying I'm happy to be home and I had bought 
the scale Lynn uses before we left and it was in the box. And so when I got home, I was so excited. It was one of the first things I did was bust out the box and get up, get myself all hooked up on it. And I'm so excited because one of the things like Lakitha was saying, it's, you know, it's great to look great in a bikini, but we're doing this for our health. And one of the things that I know is that I'm going to be 57 in a couple weeks. And I know that I need to be thinking about, you know, strength, muscle, bone density as I age. So this scale is going to go a long way for helping me do that. I, I absolutely love data. I love measuring stuff. I do think that, um, you know, I too, Lakitha have another 10, 15 pounds to lose. Um, and I've stalled, you know, and, but that's okay. Cause I feel like I'm in this restorative phase as long as I don't go up. <laughs> no, nope, nope. I'm, I'm sorry. Which scale is this? Cause I know Rose told me about a scale too. Is this the same scale that, that measures the fat? Yeah. It's a Renfo brand and the Renfo has quite a few different models, but it's actually a pretty inexpensive scale. I don't know how much you paid for it, Kim, but I know I haven't seen it really over maybe 25 bucks. Well worth it. Um, it's so, um, so good at um, helping you understand the different like things that go into that number on the scale, right? Because it measures water, it measures skeletal muscle, it me measures muscle mass, it measures bone density, and then visceral fat versus subcutaneous fat. And so I'm happy to say my visceral fat is low. It's really good. I'm in the green, but I have more subcutaneous fat than I need. So, um, so I just, I'm so excited because I joined a gym and I'm going like six days a week and I'm working different parts of my body. And so the neat thing is I will be able to show the hopefully loss of subcutaneous fat and growth of skeletal muscle. So I'm just, I'm so excited about that. And, um, yeah, you know, I was not capable of being excited about stuff like this four months ago, right? I was just like plodding along, hanging in, doing what I thought was good for me, but not, I didn't have the oomph that I have now and the, and the energy and the joy and the focus. So I'm just super, super excited. Thanks for asking. And I actually, actually recently, did a new video on my channel. I don't know if you saw it about how to actually do the fat loss calculation. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, that's the one number it doesn't give you. You have to right. use the number that gives you to come up with it. Video is clear. I gave several different scenarios. Because it has, you have to factor in if you've gained or lost um, what it classifies as fat free body weight, which is, you know, your good tissue and yeah. your muscle, your bone and you know, all that. And so, because you can, your scale weight can go even up, but if you're gaining muscle and bone, you could actually have been losing fat. Right. And, you know, so there's a variety of different, you know, uh, scenarios that you can have. You can have your scale weight go down and be all excited, but you're losing fat. Just so it's really important to look or, at- Or losing muscle. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't want to lose muscle. muscle. Yeah, yeah, because if you're losing muscle, that's not good. So, right. yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll send you the link to the video, and it's you know it's very well put together and explained. Okay. So great. You want to pipe on here that the ultimate gold class measurement is a DEXA scan. You can get them right. done very inexpensively. Um, you know, just look up DEXA scan. Body spec is in our area constantly from Seattle all the way down. Um, I highly recommend that. Or you can use the Bod Pod. But when I first started getting my body fat measured, that's what I used until DEXA scan came along with body spec. Yeah, and absolutely. I swear by that. Okay. And then we, DEXA then, scan is a gold standard. The scale is a good good for tracking trends. I found it to be yeah. very reliable in tracking just the trends. 
And, so, and then when you compare the two, don't be disparaged by the differences. Correct. But if you're using exclusively the scale, it is what it is. Roll with it and use that as your data. But I would encourage all of us and anybody out there at least to experience a DEXA scan once in a while. Right? How much have you had to pay for that? Um, if you get it done monthly, I think it's like $49 if you join their club. But I generally get mine every quarter or so so i'm paying like 69 69 which is not okay. bad it's a small investment yeah so even though my scale says one thing and i love my scale i want to know what the true numbers are yeah. and as i'm getting older i'm not doing it every quarter on the nose so right. compulsively yeah. i'm kind of like chilling a little bit and often so. you can get you know especially with women over 50 you mm -hmm. can get your doctor to at least uh, put in an order for your first one. For one, yeah, because yeah. of the bone density. You know, one of the things, I love Hawaii, and one of the things about Hawaii, I think, I don't know if I was telling you this, Rose, mm -hmm. I found it fascinating, like they were having a surfing event, right? And so you mm -hmm. think surfing event here on the West Coast or just, you know, on our side of town, you may think young people, you know, you know, perfect. It was like a lot of older people in this surfing event, mm -hmm. you know, the people who lived on the island, like in their 60s, 70s, I'm like, that's what I want. Okay. okay. That is goals. And this didn't look like, you know, hey, let me just enter a contest today. This looks like this is a way of life for them. They look very healthy. And I just loved it. So that that's kind of motivating too. You know, you don't want to go to Hawaii looking a mess. But anyway. <laughs> A, a hot mess from the Pacific Northwest. Exactly. That's how we do it, right? Exactly. So, yeah, but that was just, that was fascinating to me. Like, wow, this is just a way of life for you guys, huh? You know that they're out and about and just, you know, living out, you know, truly outside. And just, yeah, they're, they're grounding. They're walking barefoot on the beach. So they're grounding and then they're getting, you know, uh, vitamin D yes. like crazy out in the sun. Yes. So, yeah, it is the way to go. I can't talk my mind and iodine. Yeah. iodine is very, very uh, more prevalent in the yeah. air, in their food. In their ocean yeah. waves. Ah. And iodine is really, most people are deficient to some extent. Yeah. So. Right. So they got um, some things working for them that we don't necessarily, they, but that's yeah, okay. They've probably been doing it their whole lives, too. It just goes to right. show that if you don't stop, yeah. you can stay fit. Yes. Yeah. To your older years. Absolutely. That's so, a really great point. So whatever we're doing today, we just have to keep doing it. On and on and on. What are you going to say, Rose? So let me just give y'all some really quick updates. Okay. So when I, okay, when we, when May 4th hit, okay, y'all, I was wearing my wigs, waves, wigs, weaves, braids, all that good stuff. Okay. May 4th, I had to stop off and drop off a big old box at UPS, right? Before I got on I-5. Y'all, I had my curly wig on. I was sweating. I was like, I don't sweat. I'm normally cold because it was so hot. So I said, oh, I've gelled this wig down. I'm not taking it off until after, you know, after I meet you guys and have coffee and get back on I-5. Then I can just go, boom, take it off. Y'all, when we was walking out in green, like I was like, this don't make no sense. I'm sweating up in here and it's not even summertime. Okay, that's number one. So on May 12th, I decided on Mother's Day, excuse my language, because I know some of y'all don't curse, but I was like, fuck this. I need some freedom. I'm going back to my natural hair, my natural roots, because normally under wigs, I would just corn roll my hair down or don it in a gel bun or something like that because I have alopecia all around my edges and up here. Mm -hmm. But I was like, look, we're going to do some twisty styles, some updos. And it's I love it, by the way, on you. I love that style on you, by the way. Shoot. And um, for the really first good. couple of weeks, I had wore head wraps and stuff like that. And, you know, afros, Coach L. Kelly and all that stuff. I was like, I am styling. Then I said, let me just throw these hair wraps away and wear them at night. You know what I'm saying? Or while I'm working out. So that's number one freedom. I said no more wigs, waves or, or wigs or breed, wait, weaves or braids until September the 1st, but I think I'm going to let it go indefinitely because I'm liking my natural hair. I got a lot of it, right? So that's one thing. And then um, I had ate a can of sardines about a year ago, about a year ago. 
And well, no, no, no. Let me tell you. So I had bought them from an African shop. My friend owns an Afri African shop. It was doused in like cayenne and some stuff like that. But I didn't flip the can over prior to purchasing these three cans, soybean oil, all these oils. After I had ate the initial one, they were these little sardines with fish heads on them. I said, I just can't do them. Threw the other two cans away. Never looked back. But um, me and another collaborator, they were doing a sardine fast challenge and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to fast on no sardines. I'd rather not eat nothing. But on May the 23rd, I had ordered um, some sardines from Amazon and then I went to the Walmart brand. So I've been eating at least two to three cans of sardines per day. Fry, I mean, but I mash them up and put bacon grease and cook them like that. Girl, I love them. I love them. So I'm trading in one burger patty for it. I still eat a lot of food. So that's something new that I'm doing. Wow. Um, and uh, okay, y'all. You know, challenging ourselves as women over 50, 55 plus. So last year I challenged myself to do a Zumba class. Zoom is not my jam, but I said, oh, let me get in 10 little trial classes and then get certified and then let's see where it go. Okay, first, if you're not speaking the language that I speak or I can't understand you, I got a problem. I can follow the beat, but it's not the beat that I'm used to, okay? <laughs> So I did the certification, remained certified for like two months. I said, Rose, let's just stop. It ain't worth it, right? So I walked into, have you guys heard of Mixed Fit or Commit Dance? No. So Commit Dance Fit was really founded here in Washington State by a young person, as well as uh, Mixed Fit. It's the same thing like hip hop movement and all that stuff, dance and everything. So they are based out of Tacoma. So what do I do? June 2nd, I had never went to a class. Y'all, I went up in there. Okay, I went up in there and I dropped it for eight hours like it was hot. I got wow. I was the oldest Did you just say eight there. hours? Eight hours. It was from 12 to 8. The party started at 12 p.m. and did not end because they wanted to talk all the way till 8 o'clock and work all the way to 8 o'clock. And I had did a Chambers Bay 5k but i didn't lose my mind i didn't do hot works that morning i said girl you got to cut something out today <laughs> but i got certified and this is what i thought during the class ladies you know how usually like you just said coach l kelly that you are focusing on 10 more pounds for improved health trying to get to that number that you want to get to and be a ride or die at that number and then kim you mentioned the same thing and then you're saying that you're working on improving some other areas as well as with mobility and everything. But when I was in that class, they, these were some young folks. When I say young folks, I mean young folks up in this class. Okay. Like I'm keeping up. I might not be doing all the plyometrics because you know, I got to modify it. Right. I was right. like, I looked in the mirror. I looked at myself and I said, self, look motherfucking good ain't nothing yeah. wrong with you keep doing yeah. you girl keep doing you <laughs> so I, I said it. whatever five pounds I was trying to lose before my birthday whatever I was trying to do I'm good I'm cool with me so I was so happy to make that connection during a class where there's a lot of um, different body sizes and youth I was like, I'm okay. So my goal with that is, is to remain certified, go to the classes as a student, but a year from today to be able to teach a class in that particular studio for women that are 50 and older in a modified version. Nice. So that is my yeah. goal. They don't know that what's going to cool. hit them. Okay. I, love <laughs> I love that. And, and I'll then, be wait there. A, wait a minute. Two more things, y'all. Sound and Arrows was Saturday. I It, it was the 12K and 5K. I forced myself to walk and I just spursed in some running. Okay, just just little brief periods and I killed it. So I had a great time at that. And then I also, because of my passion, signed up to become re a certified ACE personal trainer. So that's you did my, it. Well, you yeah, did I it. certified in the past, but you know, I let it lapse because it was like, ah. but now that I got some goals, I'm. Well, I'm wait like, a minute. So you have to, do you have to go through the whole recertification again or can you just update? Yeah. Yeah. Because I let it go. I wasn't really using it. It was just for self education. But now I'm looking forward to using the actual personal training to help people in a different capacity of gotcha. education. So that y'all are caught up on me now. <laughs> wow. 
So well, wait, did you say 12, a 12? So first of all, when we did our walk, three, three, that's all. I, when we were, did our walk, I was hyperventilating like, oh, I was having like a 5k. What is that? You know, even my husband was like, I think it's like just three miles. Can I tell you just because we had our sense of community and just talking and we had so much fun when we finished, I was like, are we done? Yeah. Like I couldn't believe it, but yeah, that, so yeah, I, yeah, hats off to you. I can see you doing a 12 and all of that. The 5k, I was just excited. Yeah. It was fun. It was well, fun. you know, when I talk about myself and fitness, mm -hmm. you are like my goal. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, I, you are the example of where I would like to be someday. Mm -hmm. you, know, and, you know, that's going to take a lot of work on my part because I've never been as fit as you are now like oh, even when i was a teenager i just okay. never have so okay well it's like a religion for for me it's therapy it's like a religion it's a must you know it's a must what about you kim in exercise is it a yeah, must so you it's absolutely a must yeah like my journey like so just so you know i was 220 pounds in 2006 and my journey started at work, actually at a women's conference. They had a doctor there, Dr. Peak, and she basically said, look, if you're overweight, you're looking at cancer, diabetes, or heart disease, period. And it woke me up. And so I did the whole calorie restriction thing, and I went from 220 to 160 over the course of a year. But to do that, I had to do a lot of walking. A lot. Then I started swimming, and then they closed my pool, so I started bicycling. So I got a little nutso with bicycling and I would do these like, you know, five day rides. And so, I, so yeah, I like to exercise, but only like, I only like to exercise if I enjoy it. And so the bicycling was great because I liked it. The swimming was great. I never thought of myself as a gym person because it just seems like torture, right? So, you know, when I started keto, I had, I had never gone back up to the 220, but I had inched up over the years back up to like 190. So probably when I started keto in 2019, I was 190, 195, and I'm 165 now, and I'd like to get to 155. But like I said, I'm more concerned about this business of building muscle. A, because it'll help with bone density, but B, because muscle is what burns fat. <laughs> so... So I joined a gym and I can't believe that I'm actually starting to look forward to going into this place. I don't do the treadmill or anything. What I do is I warm up, I do sprints on my spin bike at home. Then I drive in and I just do the weightlifting. I think I really like weightlifting. I like that that different kind of endorphin buzz you get when you push really heavy, you know, lift really heavy stuff. And so Fingers crossed I stick with this, you guys. I think I will because I it's too easy. You go in, you you grunt, <laughs> you lift heavy stuff, you grunt, and you go home. And it's not I had built it up in my head that to go to a gym and lift weights was gonna be like boring or gross or like take forever, be a huge com time commitment. I tell you what. It's way less time than riding your bike 50 miles, you know, mm -hmm. that takes, that's a good four or five hours out of your day to do that. And that's the only way I felt like I got a workout on the bike was I had to do at least 30 to 50 miles just to even make it worth doing, you know, but it's worth going to the gym even for 35 minutes because that 35 minutes, you're really building muscle. It's, it's fantastic. Nice. And, and I wonder, then, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, coach. I was going to say, I wonder too, because I know Kim, you were talking about your sleep and then, you know, going to the gym and building muscle and using weights that should help with your sleep too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I probably should have worked out while I was traveling, but you know, I'm super lazy that way. I don't like to go to hotel gyms. Right. Again, it's the whole gym thing, but it, you're right. If I had forced myself to go down there and lift some weights maybe it would have offset whatever those chemicals were right good point so lynn do you have a vibration plate or a rebounder i think you have a rebounder yes i, remember. I do have a rebounder mm -hmm. and i do really enjoy the rebounder yeah and i have you know so since my daughter got you know the youngest got married may 3rd and 
yeah, so we're empty nesters. And so, of course, it's, she jokes because she says, my husband pretty much almost had our her room set up as a, a home gym. <laughs> she was even out of it, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I have we have my rebounder there. We have a, a, a weight, a, a bench, and we have a set of weights. And I just need to get my resistance bands in there and get them anchored somewhere. And uh, so, yeah, so we have, and we have a bunch of like posters, like laminated posters that tell you what to do with both the weight, the free weights and the resistance bands. So, but, but with that said, I am notorious for getting everything set up and then not using it. Oh, <laughs> so, me too. Okay. okay. So this okay. is step one is everything set up now use it. Yes. That's, that's what's gonna be what's what's the, I have a girlfriend who swears by this rebounder. She loves the mm -hmm. rebound. She's been telling me for months you have to get it, and I haven't done it yet. I did go on Amazon. I at least did go, you know, looking around. But yeah. do you? So you really like it? Like, is it really like she just says it's like the best thing since sliced it bread? It is because um, everything. What I've learned about it is that it really gets your lymphatic system going. And so you have to kind of start real slow and just some little like gentle bouncing because like, and it's fun. So that's hard because when it's fun, I tend to go crazy. And that's what I did is I went a little crazy the first week that I had it. And then I'm like, why am I feeling so tired and drained? Oh. And, and, uh, you know, I was, was it, is it like, is it like a 10 minute session or how, how long um, do you think you, well, I mean, maybe for someone who's in better shape than I, but I, started out i could only do maybe a minute because i was in such terrible shape and it is a calf workout I and mean, yeah. it really is even if all you do is gently balance it's a calf workout so mm. um, i had to build up to doing more now i can do you know 20 minutes or so there's but you know it's it is a total it is quite a good workout and yeah it is so you got to drink lots of water because it will get your lymphatic system going which is good because it helps yeah. with the you know, detoxification, eliminating detox can bring you end up feeling better. Oh, I'm going back on Amazon. Okay. Lakeitha, you know what, what are you? The handle. <laughs> the handle helps. The handle? Okay, a handle. Okay, get the one with the handle. Okay, got it. I mean, uh, unless you have impeccable balance. I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't yeah. swear by that. No. So <laughs> I'll get the handles. <laughs> so Lakeitha, what are you doing? Are you continuing to bike yourself? I am. So I, I, I do bike six days a week. Um, that's at home. So I, you know, have my home gym because I work from home. So yeah. it's just an easier transition. If I have to think about getting in the leaving home to get in the car to go to the gym, it's just too many. And, and then in Washington and then what kind of season is it? You know, we're four seasons. You know, what's going on today? It was raining early this morning. You know, all kinds of excuses can happen. So I do work from home. I do uh, the exercise bike six days a week. Um, and I also uh, lift the free weights and everything because to Lynn's point, yes, I do want a final goal of 160, but I also want to, you know, who knows, do I need to do that? Do, you know, maybe I need, I've just started uh, lifting weights because remember, Kim, we were talking about this. Like when I get to a goal weight, I still want to reshape. I still want to transform. Right. I don't want to just be this weight. And then, you know, and I, I told you to take muscle. pictures. I told you to take pictures. That's right. Because we think before and after photos, like the 199.6 versus the 170, but you were like, even if I remained at 170, take before and after, because yeah. I'm really focused on transforming now with the weights. Um, it's just funny, you know, losing weight is just a funny thing. I just feel like when you're, when you get to our age now, it's not just about losing the weight. We have so many sexy goals. You know, we want to be healthy. Yes. We want to live. We don't want yes. disease. You know, right. we want, you know, we don't want osteoporosis. I think that's, what that's right. Osteoporosis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I'm still doing that. Yeah. I'm still working out from home six days a week. That's like a big, it's like what you were saying, Rose. It's like, um, it's just what I do. It's yes. just a part of my DNA, like brushing my teeth now. So when I had mm -hmm. COVID, um and that took me out it was just weird staring at my bike like nope can't get on you and it was just weird i actually felt i told someone i had to lay in this bed and watch reality shows and tv it was just depressing and someone said that sounds fun i'm like it's not when you're used to moving and you know and used to, and that becomes a part of your life it's not fun to just lay up for you know seven days right. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. well you know it's with the scale you know since i got my scale which was I mean, I had it before I even started eating carnivore. Um, 
it's been cool to watch. I've actually, I started out with bone density in the low end and I have gained bone. And so I am now in the, in within, I'm still in the low end of normal, but I am now within the normal range for bone, nice. for bone density, yeah. which is awesome. That is uh, I love it that we can measure all these different things other than just getting on the scale. Even yeah, BMI, right. you know, we all have a different right. BMI. That BMI number is just general, doesn't take in. So it's just nice that you can do that and look at the bone density and look at all these other things versus just the number on the scale. That's cool. It's encouraging to do that because we tend to, you know, it's not just women, you know, men too. They get right. stuck right. on the scale number. And so it's really encouraging to see that your body composition is changing. Yes. So the scale doesn't mean as much. Absolutely. You know, when we, you know, what's funny is when we, me and my husband both got COVID, he was just saying today, oh, I think I've gained back five pounds of the 10 pounds I lost. No, I just want to tell him, shut up. Because you know what? With all that COVID, I didn't have that problem. I stayed even, which is great because, you know, being a comfort eater or emotional food right. eater in the past, I didn't care about being sick. I could still gain during a sick time versus like how I lose appetite. So when he said that today, oh, I hope I gain. You know, he's a tall, he's 6'4", slender. So he says, I hope I gain back. And I'm like, oh, be quiet. <laughs> because that is so not my reality. But oh. Say that the sardine thing is for real. Yeah. So when you mentioned the sardines, um, I forget who, who it was. Oh, it was... Um, Oh God, I'm blanking on her name. Dr. Bonds. Luna. No, Luna. Oh, Luna. Courtney Luna. She did the sardine thing, and she tried to do seven days so she could lose weight before her health. I was doing ten days with Adrian she, and Dr. Lisa, but she, she wanted to do ten. Seven. She made it seven. Yeah. yeah. And so it inspired me, and I knew there's no way I could do seven, but I said, you know what, I can do three, and so I did a three day sardine deal. And you're right, I did come to love them. I tried um, Dr. Lisa Wiederman's recipes, which okay. I just prefer mashing it up myself, like yeah. you with the bacon grease. But yes, what, what's I, the sardine? What, the, what is this, Rose? What is the sardine thing? Well, it's this. So I fast naturally, I just fast with OMAD, right? So this sardine fast is supposed to help you to lower your inflammation, um, really kind of address any food addiction or preference issues that you might have. They're saying that if you are really hungry for sardines, then that That's means you're good to go. You can eat as many sardines as you want to eat, I mean, as many tins of sardines as you want to eat in a day and fast. But I don't really think of that as a fast. Right. Um, you know, but but they're really trying to say you're getting to the root cause of your hunger. Are you hungry yeah. for? You're never, yeah, you're you're never gonna you're comfort hungry. eat sardines. Right. You're not gonna you're go. Ooh, I've, like, never, I've never had a sardine before. Oh, oh so, so as a pescatarian, I've never. I just don't like the way they look, so I've just never had one. But so, now I'm just. I'm just curious. Go what you guys get the Walmart up. brand. Get them in water. My recommendation is to get them in water because you never know about the seed oils or whatever oils that are in them. And if you need to add oil, add your own olive oil or whatever you use. Yeah. I use bacon grease, right? Cause I've been on a bacon kick too. So I got plenty of bacon grease <laughs> <laughs> and I just mash them up and just put grease up in it. And it's nice and hot. What about you, Lynn? Have you had sardines girl? You know, I cannot have sardines because they're high in histamine. That's I can't right. have canned fish. Okay. And can fish, okay. yeah. Okay. And you should do you should do the fat fast then. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely do that. Um, it would have to probably be with beef tallow, which would be disgusting, yep. you know, because I can't do bacon really. I mean, I can. I've gotten to the point with my histamine that I can do a little bit, um, but I have to be careful. Yeah. And so yeah. So I know I've been I've been talking about, you know, hearing people talk about the sardine fast and thinking, you know, it's something I would try if I thought that I wouldn't have a reaction. Right. But and it may be something in the future. Like I said, I am so much better with with my histamine issues now than I was a year ago for sure. And yeah. um yeah. So we'll see. But I also had something I wanted to share that I sure. learned from Dr. Baker. And I don't know if this is relevant to the three of you, but I I asked him a question about HDL cholesterol. 
because I feel as though my HDL cholesterol is always on the low end of normal. And oh. I hear a lot of discussion about, you know, like get that HDL cholesterol up. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> but anyways, he told me that people with higher muscle mass will always have HDL cholesterol that is on the lower end and that it's nothing to worry about. Oh. And so I thought, okay, well, that's good. That makes me feel better because, yeah, he said that a lot of people that have HDL cholesterol that's on the higher end of the normal range are more lean. Mm. And so I thought that was interesting. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Coach. Oh, Kelly, you got something you want to say, girl, before we close it out? Um, no, this was a great, it was good seeing you guys again. Yeah. And I can't wait until yeah. we do our walk again. I think you were saying you're going to have a, a bigger carnivore community um, for the next walk. Weren't you guys saying it was like a lot of people coming together? Anyway, Lynn was saying that with Healing Humanity. Well, we're in hoping. August. I don't know. I don't have anything for sure, but the hope is that we can have a Washington meetup. For the club now, so you can invite yes. me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I don't know. Like I, said, I don't know when it's going to happen for sure. The, there was talk about August, but that changes all the time because it just has to do with their filming schedule. So mm -hmm. I will, as soon as I know something for sure, I'll definitely make sure to let you guys yeah. know. Joining me on this special edition, friendship edition of the Carnivore Connection. Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I forgot one thing. Lynn, what does friendship, even if it's virtual, even if you've only done it one time, what does friendship mean to you at this point in your life, girl? You know, that's a really good question because I used to put a lot of importance on what it would look like to people from the outside if I had a lot of friends. And I think that is something that's really common with younger people. And that, you know, you, you, you determine your worth by how popular you are. Right. And as I've aged, I have found that I don't need a lot of friends right. and friendship for me is someone who I'm looking for people who are just genuine. What you see is what you get. No pretenses, no masks. And I can just be myself. And I, I don't need a ton of friends. I just enjoy being around other women that I can connect with and that, and that I have, you know, you know, I don't even have to have anything in common really. As long as they're a genuine person, I am happy to spend time and get to know you. Thank you. What about you coach L Kelly? Um, yeah, to me, friendship is like, it's so many things that are comfortable, you know, to me, like comfortable, like it's like a comfortable shoe. It's like a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, you know, just a warm bath. Anyway, just, it's just some, it just brings comfort to me to know that I have, you know, friends that I can trust, a community that I can, you know, call up someone if you just want to talk and be vulnerable and not be judged to me. And to your point, Lynn, that's not a lot of people. You know, right. I, I don't mind a small circle at this age, you know, um, and, and Rose, you and I talked about this before with social media. I came off for a while. I'm not as active, but it's funny because um, someone had said to me, well, how are we supposed to get in? How are we supposed to know what's going on with you? Well, there's the phone, <laughs> there's text, and that even makes my circle smaller. Because there are those people who genuinely care about you that when they don't, hey, I haven't thumbs up any kind of post from you lately or haven't seen you lately, that we, you know, I feel like I've built even more closer connections with those friends because now, well, you have to call or I have to call you. Let's have a conversation. And I did that on purpose just because I think we can get lost in the sauce on social media and you feel like you have all these friends and connections, which they are connections, but we're talking about to what extent, right? And I'm talking about being able to call up someone and have genuine conversations, connect and community. I love you guys. I just, I think that, you know, I consider you guys friends. This is like my community, my community of friends. And, and, and why do I say that? Because women that you can get with and be yourself and feel vulnerable with and, you know, share that space and be really excited to do that and be welcome and welcoming. I think that's great. Beautifully said. Thank you. 
Miss Kim? Ditto. I mean, yeah, I, um, I feel like friendship to me is like caring about the well-being of somebody, right? Caring about what they're going through and is there anything I can do to help, right? And you only get that, like Lynn said, you only get that from genuine people who are ready to share, hey, this is what's going on with me. And then you feel like you can share what's going on with you. And then Lakeitha says something to me that helps me. <laughs> and, and I happen to say something to her in the conversation that she may take. And that to me is like a bond happens there instantly. You know, you don't have to know someone for 100 years. You can talk to them once and just know, hey, this person cares about what I just shared because they offered it. They offered me help. They offered me a thought. And um, I just love that. I didn't have that ability until I got older, you know, because it was all about, you know, appearances, right? Like, you know, and, but life's too short now. You know, I just don't care if it's not meaningful, if it's not about, you know, caring about the person I'm talking to and what they're saying, then I can't do it. And so if the person's talking about, you know, their lipstick color or, you know, the, something superficial, I just, I can't, I can't get into it, you know, but if they're talking about their health or their heart or their love life or, you know, something that I can, I can offer something you know, oh, I've had that experience. Here's what happened to me. Maybe some of this will translate and help you. That's what I love. I Like you, Rose, you call yourself a connector. You truly are. You've connected all of us. Well, I guess that's, I, I don't know what the word is for me, but I'm just a, I'm just a, a carer, I guess. That's where friendship starts for me is, you know, can, can, like Lynn said, is this an authentic thing going on here? And, and can we exchange our heart, you know, what's on our heart? So I totally felt like we did that on May 4th. And I totally felt like we did that tonight. So yes. Absolutely. what about you, Rose? Yes. So friendship for me, honestly, I have so many friends, everybody that I come into contact with, I automatically think of them as my friend. As a matter of fact, on my social media posts or when I engage with people, it's always my friend, my friend at work with the students that I work with and my colleagues. It's my friend, my friend, because I believe that everybody that I'm in contact with, whether it's positive, negative or mad is my friend. They're placed on my path for a reason. I have tons of friends. I I am a friend everywhere I go in return as well. But my power circle, those that are close to me, that are connected to me, that can call me or I can call them, those are few, very few, right? Those are my ride or dies. Those are my power circles. But I believe that I'm a sister friend to everybody that I come into contact with because it's needed. In this day and time, it's needed. I need it, and I'm sure somebody in the universe needs it as well. I think that's your superpower. Yeah, I think so too. I do. I do. That's your okay. superpower. Thank you. All right, my dearest friends, thank you for joining me on this episode of the Carnivore Connection, where heartfelt, con heartfelt, and soulful kind con of conversations take place.